Today we're going to walk through what it takes to successfully launch a Kubernetes cluster on Google Cloud Platform using the Containership Cloud Platform. To get started, you'll need to set up your provider, which in this case is Google Cloud Platform. To do that, you can go to the upper left-hand corner to your organization settings and select Providers. From there, there's an Add Provider button. Additional documentation can be found in the links below on how to go through that process. But before you get started and launch your cluster, that needs to be done. Now you're ready to go, so press the Create button in the upper right-hand corner and then select Cluster. Today we're going to create a cluster from scratch, but you do have the option to attach a cluster if you need to that's already existing. I'll choose Create Cluster. From there you choose the provider that you want to launch on. Today I'll do Google Cloud Platform, and since I've already set it up, it's available and ready to go. Advance to the next screen, and now we choose the region in which we want to run our cluster. I'll choose US Central. Go to the next screen and it's time to give your cluster a name. I'll call it Demo. And choose the version of Kubernetes that you'd like to deploy. Uh, Containership Cloud Platform supports uh, 1.10 and 1.11. Uh, it's your choice as to which one you want to launch. You also need to specify the network name and it's by default, it's set to default. If you want a different network, then you can create a new as well as sub network directly within the UI. You're now ready to go and set up your actual master pool. The master pool screen allows you to choose the size of the machines that make up your master pool if there's more than one. So I'll just choose one of these small ones. Um, it also allows you to designate the zone and you can choose whether or not you want it to be high availability or not high availability. When you select it to enable that, you'll notice the node count will jump from one to three, giving you a high availability master pool. There are also some advanced options that can be covered later in uh, follow-up videos as well as within our documentation. Uh, for today, we're going to keep it simple. I'm able to now move forward to the next screen where I'm going to set up my worker pools. So same concept as before, you essentially come in here and choose the size of machine that you'd like to run as well as the number of nodes within that specific pool uh, and the zone in which you want it to run. You do have the option to add additional worker pools and within these you can choose various node counts as well as a different type of machine size. Uh, it's important to note that once you create these after you launch the cluster you can expand them and you can scale them down as well as add any additional needed worker pools let's say with a different style of machine. I'm set with what, what I selected here so I'm ready to move forward. Now we get to the part where you choose the plugins that are going to launch with your cluster. By default, the Containership Cluster Management plugin will be enabled. That's what powers this dashboard. Uh, and as well as Prometheus and Kubernetes logging, they will be by default selected. If you don't want them, you can remove them. Uh, you can also add them later on if you choose not to deploy them now. Once I'm going to keep this all uh, selected by default and I'm going to move forward, and it brings me to my summary screen that gives me basically the overall monthly cost of the cluster that I just set up. You can see here uh, the different types of instances that I've selected as well as the zone, the name, um, uh, and the version of Kubernetes that I'm going to deploy. Now I just hit the continue button. <clears throat> Containership is going to go out and launch the VMs that I just specified and it's going to stand them up as a Kubernetes cluster. This process can take anywhere from five to 10 minutes depending on the provider and the size of the instances that were selected. Okay, it looks like our cluster has come online. I'm gonna go ahead and click into it. And we should see that our metrics are now up and running. Uh, we can also confirm that the various node pools that I created have come online as well, and I can click into them and see how they're doing. Um, and then if we go back to the cluster area, uh, we're now ready to deploy our actual workloads, which can be found in follow-up videos as well as in documentation link below. If you have any questions about what we did today and would like to see the written form, you can access uh, Containership's full documentation in the upper right-hand corner. Or if you have any other questions, you can reach out to the team in the bottom right hand corner just by simply dropping a line here. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. I hope you're successful on your cluster launches with GCP and Containership Cloud Platform.